And if they do not have the infrastructure to ask for more than a birthday, then guess what? You running a roleplay group do not have the infrastructure to ask for more than a birthday. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about roleplay group rules that I hate. Landon and I talked about this on Interstage Window. I'll link the VOD up in the card for anybody who wants to go watch that because that one's all about group rules. But I wanted to cover this in a spare room episode as well because I think it's an important topic and some people don't want to watch a two-hour stream VOD. So here we go. Roleplay group rules that I hate. We're going to talk about four specific rules that I really hate and then we're going to talk a little bit about group rule writing styles that will make me nope out. Some of these that I'm going to talk about are more personal preference, but the first one that I'm going to talk about is actually dangerous. I don't care what type of roleplay you're running, do not do this. And y'all know I'm serious because I pretty much never explicitly say do not do something without caveats, and there's no caveats here. You do not have the legal or technical infrastructure to safely store people's personally identifiable information. So please, for the love of God, stop asking for your players' IDs. Sending your ID over the internet is not the same as flashing your ID to buy a beer. Because this is over the internet, this information is stored. It's not simply glanced at. And I do not care if you tell them to blank it all out except for the birthday or whatever it is that you tell them to blank out. If you're doing that, then you're doing exactly what porn sites do when they ask you to fill in your birthday. And that's plenty. You do not need a photo of someone's ID to ensure that you're not liable for kids sneaking into your not safe for work roleplay. If you did, then no porn site would exist on the internet today because they all would have been run out. And if they do not have the infrastructure to ask for more than a birthday, then guess what? You running a roleplay group do not have the infrastructure to ask for more than a birthday. There are rules and regulations in place for storing people's personally identifiable information, such as copies of IDs. That's why websites that ask for this level of information are rare, because if you store this stuff, you have to be regularly audited, and if you're not following the rules, you have to pay huge fines. So stop asking for IDs from everyone, and players, stop giving your IDs to strangers on the internet. It's not safe, you could end up doxxed or have your information compromised. And I'm not saying even that the mod of the RP is necessarily going to do it. What if their account becomes compromised, they lose access to it, someone else has access to it, and your ID is in their DMs? And think about like Discord in particular. Every time you send a message in DM, you're not just sending it to the person you're sending it to, also a bunch of people at Discord can access the transcript of that DM. And other social media is the same, like this is, this is not worth it. I hate this trend, it's seriously dangerous. Okay, we're moving on to another rule. Whenever I see this type of rule, I get a little confused. Of course you have to do what the mods and admins of a roleplay ask you to do if you want to join their game. They are the people there in authority. So when I see this explicitly stated in a rule, I get a little weary. Like, okay, hear me out. Do you honestly think that the kind of player that is going to defend themselves to the mods or try to argue with the mods over something is going to all of a sudden not do that just because you put in your rules that you have to obey the mods? No. If someone feels like they're being unfairly directed or punished or spoken to or whatever, they're going to react how they naturally react and there's nothing you can do to stop that. So this rule is pointless, and in my experience, it kind of just flags your roleplay as a roleplay where the mods have control issues or boundary issues or both. At least that's what I always find in roleplays that have this rule. I don't agree with putting passwords in your rules that the player has to go find when they apply. Playing Hunt the Password does not prove that people read your rules. It doesn't prove that they'll remember your rules. In fact, nothing you do will ensure players read, remember, or follow your rules. 
Part of being an admin or mod means reminding people when they slip up, regardless of why they slipped up. I mean, think about it. Most people don't remember what they had for breakfast yesterday, let alone remember rules for a roleplay that they joined months ago. This is something that I see in a lot of roleplays that are more like war games than an actual roleplay. So if you're playing war games and that's your jam, then ignore me, use this rule. But if you want a narrative roleplay with a compelling story, ditch this rule. Let your players plot and decide how they want things to go. Let them craft an arc for their character or ship if they want to do that. And if they don't just want to go with the flow, that's fine too. But stopping your players from planning just to get a handle on those that try to win at roleplay is also going to stifle a lot of creativity in your roleplay. If you're not sure what I'm talking about when I say plotting, I made a whole video about plotting. Link to that up in the card if you would like to understand more. This usually comes in the form of rules that are something like, you must roleplay with everyone. And in my experience, it's just not really enforceable and it doesn't really foster a healthy environment. Everyone in your roleplay doesn't have the inclination, time, or desire to roleplay with everyone else in your roleplay. And think about it, what exactly are you going to do if somebody says, I don't want to roleplay with this other person, I don't like them? Are you really going to remove someone from the roleplay because they only have time to write with a few people? Are you going to make somebody roleplay with a person that they had a previous argument with and they're on bad terms? I just don't find this type of rule beneficial or realistic. And especially the flavor of this rule that comes in, you have to roleplay with the mods. Yes, I saw that once, blew my mind. There's also a few styles of rules that I typically avoid. First is repetitive rules. I see this most of the time when it comes to etiquette rules in a group. They'll have like six or eight or ten etiquette rules and you read through them and there's some that are like duplicates of others and some that are just totally unnecessary. Usually two or three be nice type of rules is plenty. The second is what I call 20% rules. Your rules should cover 80% of the situations that come up in your roleplay. If you write a new rule every time someone causes an issue or upsets you or your mods, you're doing it wrong. It's okay to discuss things with individual players or even remove individual players and not update your rules. If some annoying or horrible thing happened once or twice, it doesn't have to be a rule. And lastly, just in general, I don't vibe with long rule sets. And this is mostly me. I've been in this hobby for so long. I'm going to behave how I behave. I've got my habits. It is what it is. I don't need rules that explain every little detail to me. I just need to understand the basics to know if this is a game that's a fit for me. So that being said, newer players may definitely need more. But if you're trying to attract mostly more experienced players, my recommendation is shorten up those rules. All right, that's my group rules I hate video and why I don't like those rules. This video isn't meant to be shade against anyone. It's roleplay. Do what you want. Well, except the asking for ID thing. Everyone, please stop doing that. It's dangerous. The rest, though, y'all do what you want. This is just my experience of rules that I find don't really foster a fun or creative environment. So what did you guys think? Are there any roleplay group rules that when you see them, it just makes you instantly nope out that I didn't talk about? Are there things that I talked about where you're like, mm, well, that's fine, it doesn't bother me, or you actually like it? Let me know all of that down below. And don't forget, as always, to make it a great day.